Hi, this is Steve from the InfraScale team. In today's video, we'll be performing an ICB partner onboarding. This will cover how to navigate the dashboard, how to create, manage, and monitor backup accounts, and how to configure administrator settings such as rebranding. First, we'll get started by logging into the partner dashboard. You can find this at the URL dashboard.infrascale.com. After logging in, you'll gain access to your InfraScale partner dashboard. This is where you can manage all of your InfraScale products and backup accounts. In the upper right corner, you'll find your provisioned versus use space. There's a main menu bar, which is where you'll find most of the functionality. And below are a few at a glance widgets and graphical charts. Let's go ahead and create a backup account. We can do this by first clicking the manage tab on the main menu bar, where you'll see two options related to cloud backup companies and backup accounts. If you plan on creating more than one backup account per client or per company, we first recommend creating a company. This will act as a container to house and group backup accounts into and can help keep things organized so that you can quickly tell which accounts and products belong to which company. To create a company, click the create company button in the upper right corner and fill out the form that appears. The form is fairly straightforward, a few things to note, is managed, allows access to the company dashboard directly from the partner dashboard via the login as admin option, which we will touch on more in just a few minutes. If you deselect this, you will need the company admin credentials to access the company dashboard. And on that note, there are three different levels of dashboard. We're currently looking at the partner level, but there's also the company level and down beneath that, there is the backup account level. Username, this will serve as the company admin. Each company is assigned a company admin, which one can use to log into the company level dashboard via the same URL that we're currently using. This is useful if there's a local admin that also wants access to their company's accounts, reports, and data. This admin user also duels as a normal backup account, so you could back up to this admin account. And lastly, UltraSafe is an account security type for the admin. This disables any and all password reset or retrieval functionality to the point where even InfraScale engineers cannot assist in any event of a lost or forgotten password. This is a HIPAA requirement, which is why most medical clients choose the UltraSafe option. And once the company has been created, you'll see a new line item generated along with several columns that contain details about the company. You can quickly see the provision space versus use space, the number of accounts, and also what products are enabled for the company. Moving over to the right side of the company, we will find a settings button. Let's have a quick look at some of these options. First we have login as company admin. This will send you to the company level of the dashboard, whereby you will only have access and visibility to the accounts within that company. Next is Edit Company Products. This is where you'll go to provision additional storage space to a company or to enable or disable other InfraScale products. Then we have Change Company Name. Just as this implies, this will allow you to change the company name if needed. Next is Cancel Company. This will not only remove the company from your dashboard, but it'll also cancel all the backup accounts that exist within this company. The space will be reclaimed for reuse and the data will be purged from our servers in 60 days. Next is Make Unmanaged. This will break the link between your partner dashboard and the company dashboard and of course all the accounts within that company. So you will not have direct access to the data from the partner dashboard. This is in such a scenario where the client wants to use your solution but does not want you to have direct access to sensitive data. And finally, there is recovery event report. This will provide you an Excel report that shows how many times and when the company accounts attempted to recover any data. Now that we've covered the companies, let's move over to the backup account section via manage backup accounts. We see one backup account already listed. This is the admin account of the company that we just created. And since the admin account also duels as a backup account, we can simply upgrade the account space via the edit account size option. Or we can choose to create a new backup account, 
with the Create Backup Account button. Once again, a form will appear where you'll need to fill out the fields. The form is fairly straightforward, but here are a couple things to note. When you input the email address, the account name auto-populates. You can modify that username if you need to, and it does not need to be the email address. And again here we have the UltraSafe option, which you can enable for each backup account. Here we have the Limit Users Rights option. This will remove the option to delete data from the end user software agent. The only option they will have is to recover data. And lastly, if you have any add-on licenses for Exchange Granular Recovery or Shadow Protect, you can assign them here. Once the account has been created, you'll see a new line item generated along with several columns that contain details about the account, including provision space versus use space, how many devices are backing up, and the number of backup alerts. And looking over to the right side, we have some admin settings that are related to the backup accounts. First, we have Manage Backup Policies. With this, you can create and deploy remote policies to specific devices. The remote policy will override the local configuration. Next, we have Move Account to Company. This allows you to move accounts to different companies if needed. Change Account Size. You can upgrade or downgrade the account size. Change Account Email. This is used for password resets. Suspend account. This will prevent the user from being able to log into the software and will halt any new backups from occurring. However, what's already been backed up will remain safe and sound in the cloud. Cancel account. This will completely deactivate the backup account and remove the line item from your dashboard. You will reclaim the space for reuse and the account data will be purged from our servers in 60 days. If you'd like to reactivate the account, the support team can quickly assist. Cleanup account is a dashboard tool used to clean up old or stale data, uh, data that is older than X days or data that has not been modified in X days. Uh, it's just an easy way to get rid of old data. And next we have login as backup account, which will take you to the backup account level of the dashboard. This serves as a web portal for the end users so that they can quickly recover files from a lo remote location without the need to download and install the software agent. Next we have Limit Users Rights. This will remove the ability to delete from the software agent. So the only option that the user will have is to recover data. And the last two we have are Set Password, where you can reset the account's password. And lastly, Make Company Administrator. Uh, this will allow you to switch the company admins uh, two other backup accounts if needed. Now that we've covered companies and backup accounts, let's move on over to the devices list. You can find this via the manage tab, devices. This view will show you all of the devices that have had the backup software installed on them. It will also show you the details related to the last connection date, the amount of used space, the OS version, the backup client version, and the last successful backup. And similar to the company and backup accounts, you'll also find a set of settings on the right hand side. These settings will only show if the device has an active connection indicated by the green light. The first we have is cancel active backups. So here you can remotely kill or cancel any active backup jobs. So if you have a client that's calling you and, and maybe complaining about bandwidth, you can come here to the dashboard uh, see if there's an active job running and cancel that active job. Next we have configure backup jobs. Uh, this relates back to those remote policies that we touched on. So here you can uh, create and deploy remote policies to specific devices. There's deactivate device. This will halt the backups, but it will keep what's already been backed up in the past safe in the cloud. Next we have download logs. This will allow you to remotely download the error or the backup logs. Next we have install bare metal backup. This will install the InfraScale bare metal plugin. Once installed, you will see the bare metal option populate within the software client GUI. There's run backup. 
With this, you can initiate a backup from this dashboard. We have update application, which is used to remotely update the software client to the latest version. And lastly, there's wipe device, which is a powerful tool that can be used to wipe the local data. This was created to address compromised data, such as a stolen or lost device. There are two options, delete the data that was selected for backup from the local device, or render the device unbootable by deleting system and OS files. Your partner credentials will be required to finalize this action. And now that we've finished out the devices, let's take a look at the rest of the options found within the Manage tab. Here we have the backup policies. This is where you'll go to create and manage your remote backup policies, which you can then apply to specific devices. You basically set the what to backup, when to backup, set the email reporting, the retention settings, and then you can push that policy to a specific device. The next option we have is DR sites and appliances. This is where you can view, manage, and access all of your DR appliance devices under one roof. We also have the Cloud Application Backup, or ICAB for short. This supports the backup of O365 Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, G Suite, and Salesforce. And you can click the link here to see an ICAB demo in action. And finally, we have licenses where you can assign the add-on license for Exchange Granular Recovery or Shadow Protect. On the next tab, we'll find the Monitoring section. This will provide us a high-level reporting view as to how the backups are performing. You can quickly tell whether they're successful, they're failing, or perhaps something in between, such as a warning. You can also find a Monitoring Settings button near the upper right corner where you'll find a variety of admin reports from usage and status reports to error and warning alerts, and even some ransomware detection reports. Moving on over to the reporting tab, you'll notice that it's a little similar to monitoring, but rather than providing a high level view, it's more of a play by play of the actual backup. So it'll tell you when the backup started, what the transfer rate and the time was for the backup, and when or if there was any errors during that backup. And the next tab over is the Apps tab. This is where you'll find all the software clients from the EXE for Windows to the DMG for Mac. And there's also an MSI generator used for mass deployments. The Settings tab is where you can find all your dashboard, admin, and account settings. A few items to note. The first is backup accounts. Here you can enforce a hard stop of the quota at 100%. So when the client reaches 100% use space, the backups will stop. By default, we do allow the account to go past that and into the red. So if you do want to enforce a hard stop at 100%, you can do so here. There's also another option within the backup accounts labeled file sharing. This will determine whether or not your backup accounts at the backup account level of the dashboard will be able to share files via an email link. If you disable this, they will not have the ability. Next we have administration. Here you can create additional dashboard admins and also create and set specific roles for those admins. Moving down, we have rebranding. Here is where you'll configure all the branding for both the software agent and the dashboard. There's the monitoring settings, which is just another link that will take you to that monitoring section. And lastly, we have ConnectWise and Automate integration for both billing and ticketing. You can click on the links down below to check out some of these how-to videos. And the last tab is our help tab. Here you can find links to both our support page and team, as well as several self-help guides and getting started videos. Another great resource you can find is the Partner Resource Center. This is a repository that contains a well of marketing and sales collateral, technical spec sheets, competitor comparisons, and a bunch of how-to videos. And that just about concludes our onboarding for the Partner Dashboard. Thanks for watching.